This is Really Famous. I'm Kara Mayer Robinson and I interview famous people, but I don't just interview them like your typical interview. I'm not really interested in those same old questions. Instead, I like to know who they really are and what they really think. Sometimes it's like listening to old friends catching up and other times it's like eavesdropping on a therapy session. My guest today is Yule Vazquez. Now, before we get to Yule, I do want to know how you are. How are you? If you're feeling okay physically, how are you emotionally? Fill me in. I genuinely, authentically, 100% would love to hear from you. You can email me at reallyfamouspodcast at gmail.com or you can message me on social media. So I have a ton of content with celebrities and because of everybody basically being quarantined and isolated, I figured I'll gather it up and release it on my YouTube channel and also here on the podcast. So get ready for that. Make sure you're subscribed on YouTube. It's youtube.com slash really famous. Now to this show, which was recorded days before the world truly started shutting down. A few days later, actually, Yule and I were texting each other saying how weirdly different everything is now. But it was really right on the brink when we met. And that was just the beginning. Anyway, we recorded this live at The Stand, a comedy club and restaurant in New York City. And it was my second live show. It was, I loved it, loved it, loved it, loved it. And if you came out to see it, if you were there that night, thank you. I know I thanked you that night, but I'm going to thank you again now because it was amazing that even with the rain and with the threat of coronavirus, you still came out to support. And I love you for that. And hopefully we'll see each other again very soon at another live show. And as you probably know by now, my show with Chaz Palminteri had to be postponed, but I'm definitely planning on rescheduling it when normalcy returns. Um, Also, just a quick little word about the stand. It was a great venue. I loved being there. At times when Yule is very close to the mic, you'll hear a little feedback. It probably won't bother you, um, but I figured I'd mention it. And now enjoy the show as it happened, starting with my intro that I rehearsed before the show. Every Monday, I release a new episode, a nice in-depth conversation with a celebrity and you can get it on any podcast app you can get it on spotify on pandora apple podcasts the youtube channel is where i post videos short q a's usually they're fun a little bit lighter um sometimes i have the longer videos there too you can get that at youtube.com slash really famous and then the live shows this is number two as i said i have Chaz palmentary coming up next in a couple of weeks if all goes well and New York City doesn't shut down. Because like everything is shutting down now. Did you notice that? I don't even know what's going to happen, but one day at a time. Uh, so I have Chaz Palminteri and I have uh, Michael Ian Black coming on the show and others lined up. So if you want to get tickets, just go to reallyfamous.com. But actually, don't do that because you won't find anything there. I do not have the domain name reallyfamous.com. It has to be really-famous.com. I couldn't get it, I tried, somebody owns it, they're not even using it, and yet, if somebody here owns it, let's talk after the show, because I want that domain. So anyway, yeah, you can go to really-famous.com and you can get links to everything there, the podcast, YouTube channel, and the tickets. Yeah, and if you want to connect with me on social media, if you look at that postcard on the back, I have all of my social media handles there, and definitely message me and tell me you were here tonight And that way I'll follow you back, because I would like to do that. That would be great. And uh, if you want to take pictures or little video clips while you're here of the show, great. Go for it. Tag me, for sure, so I can see it and I can share your shares. And tag The Stand, too. It's at The Stand NYC. So let's watch the really famous trailer. What do you think? All right. Now, for the real treat of the night, my special guest, who is an actor. Right now he's in The Outsider on HBO. Is anyone watching that besides me? So good, am I right? Uh, You're watching it, right? Okay, it's so good. It's based on a Stephen King novel, and not only is it starring my special guest, but also Ben Mendelsohn and Jason Bateman and Cynthia Erivo. Everyone is so good. It's so suspenseful. If you're not watching it, watch it. I think it's, is it the last episode this Sunday? Is that right? Yeah, Sunday's last episode. Sunday's last episode. But if you have HBO, you just go back to episode one. It's 
great show. So he was also in some big Netflix shows recently, like Russian Doll and Narcos Mexico and Bloodline. Love Bloodline. Did you see that? Yeah, so good. And uh, has anybody seen a show called Seinfeld? Yeah. <laughs> no, you remember that show? Well, you may remember him as part of the duo Bob and Cedric. I think his official character name was Bob the Intimidating Gay Guy, right? Yeah, yeah, so funny. And you were like, um, now I'm just talking to you because you're right here. No, I know. We should just do it from here. Uh, <laughs> no, you're not going to get off that easily. <laughs> so, yeah, so, uh, so funny. In those episodes, you were in the uh, Soup Nazi and uh, the Puerto Rican Day episode and a couple other very iconic ones, right? And the AIDS Walk. Yeah. The AIDS Walk. Yeah. Who doesn't want to wear the ribbon? <laughs> All right, I shouldn't say it, but you should. But everybody should go home tonight and like YouTube or Google those clips and watch them. It's like a perfect ending to the night, I think. So he's an artist as an actor, and he's an artist in so many other ways, too. In fact, I put together an assortment of his artwork so that you can check it out. Uh, he does street photography and paintings. And he's also a musician. He plays the guitar. And he was in a band, but not now, right? Not, not in a long time. But you were at a for a large portion of, or maybe an impactful portion of your life. Yes. OK, OK. So there's some of his artwork. And uh, also You're always an upbeat guy. No, you're an upbeat I feel like, all right, it's all good. No, I'm crying inside. <laughs> well, all right, let's see if I can have you crying on the outside, too, Yule. Oh. So, Yule Vasquez, <laughs> welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you. OK, you sit here because I already drank from this mug. OK, great. Um, so yeah, I didn't finish saying, but Yule came on the show. I invited him on because he was ready on the show last year. We did a podcast together, right? Yes, we did. And uh, any regrets after that podcast? I was what? Any regrets? Sometimes yeah. I wonder how people feel after they leave. I mean, I think, I feel like no. Well, did you see what a lot of people on there said? On what? On something, the trailer? Something that you kept coming up, you guessed, about that you're like a shrink. Yeah, yeah. And that's just, so you have this thing where you pull stuff out of people, and it's actually really, I was actually excited to come and do this, and I'm never really excited to do anything like this, but... You're, and I said to other people, I said, you're a great interview, you know, and you, and you have an ability to get people to open up and talk, and then you have an even better ability, once, you get, once they're going, to just hit the right buttons, and then they just keep sort of, it's like that jackpot just keeps, you know, sevens and sevens and sevens, you know what I mean? And it's like, guys on there going like, what did I just give you? <laughs> like, but people came to me after and said, people who listen to it, uh, found it really interesting and helpful to them about certain things that I spoke and I said hey man it, it, it was her you know she she can get you to, to talk about these things so well yeah. thank you I yeah. appreciate that but it was you talking about them just saying yeah you know what I mean was it me I don't know it was you all right I fine I have a certain approach I guess it's just naturally what I'm interested in well you you're a shrink you're a former shrink yeah I mean that's a powerful tool yeah I guess <laughs> I guess it is, yeah, oh right. God, yeah. It is, right. I don't yeah. practice it now, so no. I don't really feel that, like that. That doesn't mean that, you're not, that you don't still have this uh, I do. tool set. I do. And I use it because I just am most interested. I'm interested in that. Yeah. And I can't help it, I guess. No, and I think it's great. I think it works great for you and clearly for your guests. Yeah. Um, I do think that some people probably don't feel as comfortable with, with it as you do, though. Yeah, you know, I, I actually don't. Yeah. I mean, I don't care. It's like, I'm not, it's like, what do you want to know? I mean, I'm, uh, there's a few things I won't tell you, but I'm, like I'm pretty, well, uh, <laughs> no, you know, there's, but I don't know. I think if, if I, I, if I can say something that I've been through that might help like a young artist, I mean, to me, it's all about making stuff. Like I make stuff, whether it's a painting or a mm -hmm. photograph or, or acting or playing the guitar. I don't know. You know what I mean? Um, so if I can say something that'll help a young artist maybe sort of go on that road and do that, then, then that's okay. Then they're like, I, I don't mind saying it, you know what I mean? Even if it's like at some tiny cost to me, you know? 
but you reveal something about yourself and it helps somebody and I think that's that's a good thing yeah and I, you do that as an actor too I'm sure in a big way right you pull it, is that kind of mm -hmm. your technique is that you pull from your real experiences and your real emotions or no well, I, uh, I mean this is a whole now now oh, you know actors topic. talking about acting good night everybody and see. I'm not an actor, so at least it's not uh, that. Let me tell you my process, Kara. Um, I go into a deep trance. No, I, uh, I work in a way that is, um, look, I don't think anybody can become, you can't become someone else. I think that's a personality disorder. That's, you know, some, you know, that is a psych disorder. I think you told me this last time, too. This sounds yeah. very familiar, yeah. Because it's, it's a simple sort of approach to acting. I think you're, you're doing a character, obviously, because it's somebody else's words and you're wearing, you know, somebody else's skin. But ultimately, it has to be you. And if it's not you, if you don't come through, then, then it's all wrong, in my, in my opinion. So, you know, I don't, I'm not, I don't, I'm not somebody who draws on like stuff that happened to me in the past. I'm more, I like to create it in my, in my, in my imagination because I think your imagination is way more powerful mm -hmm. than anything that you may have experienced. Like you can conjure darker things in your head than have happened to you. And, you, and you, as a shrink, you know that I'm right, don't you? Yeah, I guess. I mean, yeah, I don't have to, for my, to, to relate to somebody else. If that's what you no, mean. No, you, but, but say, say somebody who has sort of cyclical OCD thoughts that yeah. spin them, yeah. that aren't real. So that thought is not real, but it has spun them into... Oh, definitely. Okay. Yes. So imagine being able to do that at will. So you be, being able to sort of get those thoughts going and have it have a physical manifestation. That's more powerful than remembering when your dog, Fester, was hit yeah. by a garbage truck or the ice cream truck, and then you hate ice cream for the rest of your life, you don't eat ice cream. So let me ask you something. Can you get out of that state? If you work your way, your, yourself up to that point, then when the director or whatever says cut, are you done? No, I, they take me away in like a straitjacket. Um, <laughs> and then they, I'm, I'm sedated, and then, it, and then once that sort of wears off, then they, they release me. Uh-huh. Yeah, no, I mean, look, I think the greatest thing in the world is to be, is to be literally almost making jokes, like cracking, like you're about to do something really, that camera, that camera's rolling, right, guys, rolling. Just because the camera's rolling, though, the guy said action doesn't mean you have to do anything. So the camera's rolling, they call action, and I'm like, and you're right, you're off camera, I'm like, hey, blah, 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 and then you turn and you go, I think that's sometimes more powerful than sitting there trying to sort of stew up this thing and like conjure these, bring down the demons and all that stuff. I think, because cause laughing and the other thing, is two, it's, just, it's two sides of the same coin. So, you know, um, but that's, listen, that's, that's my approach. You know? mm -hmm. People have many ways of, of, uh, of doing this, but I don't believe if you don't see a human being, yeah. then you have failed miserably and the director has failed and the whole thing has failed. Because, what is interesting to watch is, is humans going through something, not some shenanigan, you know, thing going on, histrionics yeah. or rubbish, you know. Right, right. Yeah, I know everybody comes in it, comes to it from a different angle, and it works. Different things work for different people, but it's interesting. Yeah. So let me ask you: when you're when you're like the TV is on or something, you see yourself. Do you watch The Outsider? Are you watching it now? I'm watching The Outsider because because my wife wants to watch it, but I I, I generally do not watch anything. I, I I will not watch anything. No, generally don't. No. Because. Well, because, again, so usually the the memory. Of, of making it sometimes is better than the product. So, you know, you all, you're like, hey, man, that scene was pretty good, right, Joey? Yeah, man, I think it's gonna be great. Then you watch it and go, like, it's pure shit. I mean, so, you know, that's, that's heartbreaking. Or you have a memory of that day or something was going on or some guy was off camera mm -hmm. or that guy was not being very nice or that guy was, you know, that was happening and then you, you're watching it so you have, a, you have a point of view, you have a perspective that the audience does not have. The audience is watching from a neutral place. So, therefore, that is why a lot of times I will not watch it. The other reason is there's nothing I can do about it now. Yeah. I, don't, I don't mind watching playback and maybe I can fix something. But once it's done, and I've given you, once I hand you the takes, that's, that's the thing about this that's really terrifying. So you go in there and you do it. You do maybe 12 takes or something, you know, if you're lucky, you get 12. 
<laughs> so you like a lot of takes. You that, want that? I mean, I don't. I will. I will ask for takes, or mm-hmm. the director wants to take. We'll do it. I don't care. Uh-huh. But you. But it's usually multiple takes, and then they take this thing, you know, and then they put it together, and they're not. Maybe they're not going to use the take that you liked, what you thought was th- was the right take. I mean, they're going to use whatever th- works for them. You know, that's the thing. Very few times do you go into something with a director where the thing is only going to cut together one way, which is the way he saw it in his head. Usually you're going to have many angles, lots of coverage, where like you could give it to like, you know, I don't know, a chimp and he could Uh cut it together. Uh I mean, which is unfortunate because that's bad. Because then, you know, you've sort of erased the vision of, of like the singular vision. Right, right. Makes any sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, right. Is this, is this mine? It's yours, and it's has clean. Has this been roofied? Is it roofied? No, it's clean too. The mugs are clean. The water, just I just opened the water bottle myself. Wait, clean? As, do other guests get dirty water? <laughs> no, but I know that so somebody good, told me once that they water. never trust it. I, actually, I think it might have been my last show with Michael Imperioli. I love and Michael. One of the great actors and uh, gentlemen of our of our business. Definitely. So, do you know him personally? I do. I do know Michael. Mm. Yeah, he's, he's Michael's. Michael's a lovely guy. Yeah, he yeah. definitely is. Yeah. So I'm pouring. So we're doing the same thing that you and I are doing, and uh, I think that that. But the water bottles weren't open yet. That was the thing. We had them behind. It was our first show, and then I'm I'm like pouring it in. He's like, "What are you doing?" He like basically like hit the water bottle away, and he's like, "You can't trust these mugs because you don't know." I guess you go yeah. onto a set somewhere, and who knows if the mugs are clean or not. But yeah, no, those mugs don't. were clean then, and these mugs are clean now. But he told yeah. me that you can't always trust the mugs. You, yeah, when you see a mug at like you know your agent's office in the kitchen. I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Somebody yeah. turned wash or didn't wash those mugs. They're like, I'm just gonna put them back. That's you know? right. That's just right. get back at these people. That's you know? right. Yeah, no, that's why I bring my own coffee um, apparatus to work. What is your apparatus? It's what a. Um, I forget who makes it, but it's a uh, cylindrical thermos device that uh-huh. I uh, I put coffee in and I <laughs> I carry it with me and uh, I know it's. You know, it has got my name on it. Actually, mine says "Pretty Boy." Uh, oh yeah. I don't know. Somebody put that on there. Uh, <laughs> but I've, I've kept it, and I, it travels with me. And I'll give you, a, I'll give you a little tidbit, and it's for you folks as, out there as well. Don't drink coffee or tea on an airplane. Because of the water. It's made with the system water. Those planes are 30 years old. When's the last time you think they cleaned those tanks up? Okay. Right. So you take the tank and you fill it up at the lounge in the airport. Mm -hmm, And then that's mm -hmm. the coffee you take on the plane with you. Oh, okay. That's very interesting. Right? I don't usually have coffee or tea on a plane, I have to say. What? I don't. Even if it's a red eye and I'm waking up and I've had an hour of sleep on the plane and I'm landing in Italy or somewhere, I'm not having coffee. I don't know. I just can't. I don't like plain coffee. And I also don't want it to like rock and stuff. I don't need the hassle of knowing there's a coffee cup in front of me as we're going like this. This device I have has a lid and a lock. Uh, uh It's spill proof. I think maybe you need to. Spill proof. Show me where to get one of those. It goes in my backpack. In your backpack. Maybe you'll receive one as a gift. Yeah, but oh, very nice. I'm just saying. But you have to fill it after then. You can't, you, have to what? you can't fill it up with your good coffee or whatever before you go to the airport. You have to really make that. No, you got to do it at, in the lounge mm-hmm. or, or take it to a Starbucks in the airport and go. Oh, you're talking about the, uh, the lounge, the, uh, like the club or whatever. Yeah, one of those clubs. Or yeah, just yeah, go yeah, to a yeah. Starbucks or whatever a coffee place. Yeah, yeah, say, yeah. This is true. riveting, isn't it? You guys are riveted right now. <laughs> you can't believe your good fortune tonight that you came on this night. You could have had Chaz Palmentary, but no, <laughs> you got me. Um, <laughs> on a rainy night, on a they rainy got night us talking about coffee. But this is a useful tip. I'm sorry, uh, like everybody here can. Hey, now, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. If soon it becomes a new thing, that thing. You know, you don't want to drink that dirty tank water. Yeah, I mean, there's so many things though when you think about it, right? Like either the whole coronavirus thing, you know, whatever. I know I've already brought it up like twice. It's not like it's totally on my mind. However, we were just, my husband and I were at dinner and we were talking about like, yeah, like restaurants everywhere. There are so many places. Who knows what you're putting into your mouth? You know what I'm saying? From what's going on everywhere you go, really. Who knows? I mean, but you can't think like that. What are you going to do? You can't stop living. Yeah, exactly. No, so you can't. Nothing you can do. Yeah, I mean, what, you, you think know. about the things like the doorknobs of the bathrooms or whatever that kind of thing, and then you move on. I guess. Yeah, that's why I open the bathroom door with my mouth. 
so as not to touch it with my hands. This is a very, this is a very, very light side of you. Yeah, I'm saying no, these very are good. very strong choppers. Yeah. So what do you think about being on stage? You get into that? Being on stage? Yes, you're on stage right now. I mean, I like talking to you. Okay, I'm good, good, good. I, I'm honest to God, I'm here for you. Because you're a great hang, like dude. It's great. It's just a great, it's just a great time. Like, you know, so I like being on stage. I, I, um, yeah, if it's Because last time we talked, play, it was just the two of us. It was. Very you, different. It was very different. I mean, not that you guys don't feel like just part of the two of us, but it is a different experience. It was. Right? It was. It was a different, and, and I was a different person. Yeah. Even though it wasn't that long ago, but you know, I think if if you do, but you I'm know what it was? It was El Cuco changed him. El Cuco, El Cuco did change. Because he was him. going to Atlanta when we talked last year. It was right before he left to right. film the outside. I, was, I don't right. want to give away any spoilers. Well, you know, it's not a happy show. It's really. It's cool not a rom com, Carol. It's not a rom com. It's funny because I remember. Uh, actually, uh, let me just jump in with for a second. I posted something about you being on the show, and somebody said, ask him if he believes in El Cuco. Absolutely. It's a, I, it's I a, I'd it's a cultural answer. thing. Yeah. No, I mean, but it is, it, it's hard to understand if you don't, if you didn't grow up like in a home like I did with these sort of alternative ideas and religions and things like that, you know. So you, you know, it, it, it's a weird thing to say to a kid, but, you know, you, you would go outside or you would go, you know, you would maybe be like mischievous and they would say, don't do that, they're, they're gonna take you. And they wouldn't say who they is, but you know, you learn that basically it's the boogeyman, you know what I mean? So you would like self-police because you didn't want the thing to take you because to take you away from your home and your mom was horror, which makes for a really amazing adult when you do that to a child. As a therapist, you know yes. that was good news. So you, have, you can just it's imagine what's going ego. on in here. You developed a very healthy superego. That's the part of you that monitors what you're supposed to do all the time, the yes. right thing to do all the time. So you developed that. Your id, right, is the opposite. Right. It wants to do all the wild things that are like, go on all your impulses or whatever. And uh, your, so ego, oh, your ego, id, and superego, and ego is kind of the balancing factor. Yes, and we try to kill the ego all the time. Well, the super ego. Yeah. The it. I mean, you're trying. Well, it depends on what you're saying. What do you mean? What do you? What are you trying? You're trying. I mean, you. I mean, ultimately, that's the goal. But it's impossible. impossible. Yeah, goal. the you goal really is to it, have the you? super ego run the show because then everything you'll do is right, and you won't do anything that you right. shouldn't do. But do you always want to do the right thing, though? No. Right. That, that's the thing, though. You know. Well, I don't know. Yeah. But you know the. This idea of self self policing, you know, it's 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 like the East German, you know, intelligence apparatus of the Stasi. It's like, you know, you didn't know who was watching you in like a building or something, you know. It's it's a terrible way to live. You That's know? very interesting. So they would say that, like you yeah. said, like they're gonna take but you it's away. Not just, yeah, I mean, but it's like, in, didn't you guys? I mean. I mean you, you guys have the boogeyman here, right? It's like, hey, the boogeyman will get you. Don't do that, right? I mean, that's a, it's the same idea. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it wasn't really... Like, I didn't have adults saying that. I think it was, like, kids saying, oh, the boogeyman's going to get you or something like no, that. No, I had, I had a... That's and I different. Was, and I was the only... I was the youngest person and the only male in my house. It was all women. I grew up with women raised by women. And my grandma and my mother would be like, be home by six or because the, they could take you. That is so scary. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's so much fucking fun. Oh. You know, I mean, it's like... I mean, it you know, works. By, by the way, thank you for, for, you know, setting my therapy back months now. <laughs> Don't you. worry, you're thank getting you. a free therapy session after this. This is... My you'll God. see. I'll, take, I'll, I'll help you at the end. If you lived a thousand lifetimes, you, I, you couldn't give me that much therapy. You have no idea. It's a mess. So what have you gained from therapy? Let's talk about it. I don't it. know. I don't know that I... I don't know what did you learn? I don't know that anything, really. Like, I think so, probably. I don't know. I, I do. I, I learned, I, you know, I mean, you know, you know, look both ways before you cross the street. I think there's more you learn. No, I Come mean, I don't... I, you know, I learned some... Uh, you learn some stuff. I don't know, you know. Yeah. I honestly... what. What do you learn? That's a good one. I think, I think you receive some some tools to to self-analyze yourself, which is 
which is helpful, you know. Um, therapy was really good for me when, uh, there's a time in my life when, when my mom was ill and I went in, it was a very bad time for me. So that you learn to sort of deal with a lot of that stuff and, and stuff about, you know, one's mother and, uh, you know, and being the responsible, you know, a sort of being told that, uh, as a young child that you're the man of the house. So it's, it's kind of an insane amount of pressure, but you don't realize it as a child, you mean, see, but you're like, you know, you're, you're going into life and you're like, man, I got I to gotta pull this, I got to pull this wagon, you mean, you know, and it was kind of a, so you learn in therapy that that really wasn't true. Mm -hmm. I mean, that was like not true, you know, that you, uh, that I didn't, I wasn't the man of the house, I was a child, you know, and um, so right. you learn and stuff that like carries, that. And, right, and that carries into your adulthood. Well, doesn't it all? I mean, yeah, it just records. It I mean, the, the, it's like the hard drive is turned on, like you hit, you know, you come in on the angle, you know, you come in on an angle, whatever that, you know, you bring in the stuff from your parents and you bring in whatever planetary angle you're coming in with and you come in and you, and you, and you land, you just get onto that runway and that hard drive is, is spinning, you know, it's recording everything, you all know. And for time. me, it was like coming from Cuba as a young kid, you know, my mother leaving the country she grew up in because of political reasons coming to America. Yeah. The absolute, you know, an incredible question that my shrink had me ask my mother, which was, I never... I remember it. Yeah, it never dawned on me to ask my mother mm -hmm. what was her mental yes, state when was, I was a child. How did you feel yeah. coming here and being... Right. And I'm sure she was totally uneasy. It was Fuck so scary for her. My mother goes, what mental state are you yeah. insane? It was absolute panic. So, right, just for... I mean, I don't know if everybody knows. The background is that your mother took you and your sister... Right. When we you were Cuba. both very young, you yeah. left Cuba. Right. Your father stayed there. My, he yeah, wasn't my part parents of the family, were already really. divorced. Uh -huh. And uh, my father stayed. And she came uh -huh. here with both of you, with two young kids, right. not speaking English at all. Correct. And you moved to Miami. Yeah. So, of course, traumatic. Oh, did your grandmother come too at the same yeah. time? Yeah, my same grandma time. came. Yeah. So, yeah. very scary for her. Yeah, but I ne it never dawned on me to ask well, that why question. Would, which, why I would know, it? I know, exactly. But that's the thing, though. You know, when, remember when she said ask her, I was like, man, that's a great question, which is kind of insane, because I was like, it should be an obvious question. I mean, you know, all that... All that landed in here. You know I mean, you know, that's all fuels that, that that nutty guy you see on the screen, or who makes those paintings, or like you know, or who takes those photographs. I mean, you know, all that stuff says more about me than it does about anything else. That about the writing or the subject, or or anything. It's it's me talking to the world and saying. Sometimes I send, and I have friends here tonight that receive. I'll send an email out with like seven pictures, you know, and nothing, just seven photos. And it's literally like, I'm communicating with this. I'm just, people like, you can write back or not write back, it's fine, you know what I mean? You know, mm -hmm. and I just, so, yeah, that's all part of the, it's part of the gestalt. The Gestalt. I studied Gestalt in gest grad school. Of course you did. Of you, course, did, I did a whole project with Gestalt. The Gestalt. So, yeah. And did, I, you, did you study Reiki and therapy? No. Okay. Because so, Reiki and therapy is interesting, isn't it? Okay. Why? I mean, isn't the whole thing... Uh, um, somebody was explaining to me that there's actually a book about character, about character study using, using Reiki and therapy. Okay. Um... Yeah, I don't know. So I got basically like the roundabout or the overall, let's look at this guy and this guy, and they're mostly guys, you know, and their philosophies, and then put them together, and now you know that background, and then apply it the way that you uh, see fit. Yeah. So I never really followed any one philosophy okay. when I was a therapist. I would just kind of feel my way through it, and instinctively, I guess, or, um, you know, I, I go on my intuition a lot. So I would feel what That's this good. person is feeling. Like I wasn't necessarily going in and saying, okay, this is what I'm gonna do now to help this person figure things out. So like the therapy sessions would go the way that they go and then I would learn something from each, something that was going on and then I would adapt it to that, if that makes sense. Right, but so is it more union? Do you do, no, no. So it's not, okay. No, I mean I, all that sunken, it's like you were saying, it was all recording. Yeah, sure. It's all recording, it's all sure. in there. But then when I'm actually practicing it, I mean, I, I, would, I don't want to say this guy's name because I didn't really, I don't know if you would know him anyway, but it's, he was not my kind of, he's not who I follow either, but 
Carl Rogers, do you know him? No. Okay, so he was a guy who created something called, do you guys want to hear this? This is really like, <laughs> I am them. Now we're talking about like a little bit of everything. It's a captive audience. This Karen. is, what, right. They can't press, press stop and move to the next <laughs> podcast and, right but, now. And right now, they're wishing we were dead. <laughs> <laughs> like it's raining out and we're here. Okay, right. so uh, Carl Rogers was a therapist, or a, uh, yeah, I guess he was a therapist, and he taught something called client-focused or client-centered therapy. So he would really look to see where that person was and kind of go in that direction with that person and have them figure out certain insights about themselves. So he would lead them to figure things out themselves. So uh, I like that because I do think that when I would see people gain insights, that it would really help them a lot and I would be steering them towards those insights. So kind of say like a little bit of that, you know, like there's still, there are the other influences too, but yeah. I always said I had an eclectic approach to therapy, a little bit of everything. Okay. What do you think I, I use? <laughs> I mean, you I don't, did your no, second I, therapy session. Not quite. I, what, what do I think you, you, yeah. you use? I, I, I think it's mm -hmm. witchcraft, really, mm. honestly. Yeah. I think it's some kind of voodoo you're doing to the guests. I mean, you know, people tell you all kinds of crazy shit, you know. I mean, I'm talking to you about some stuff from, you know. You're just, you're just, very, you're just very nice. People want to talk to you. That's a good thing. Yeah, you know? no, I There's a lot I of people I don't want to talk to. You right. Know? I, actually, in fact, most people, you know, I've, I've, the people I know, I've, it's the same friends I've had for a hundred years. It's like I would s same people I see all the time. Yeah. I and mean, I don't really, yeah, I'm not interested in talking to a lot of people. So generally, right. I get that. Yeah. Yeah. So you found what you like in someone and who you can trust. Yeah. And it, and honestly, sometimes in life, you know, it, it, it has, it, it has a, it'll take its own course. And sometimes those friends come and go. I mean, yeah. And, and those relationships change. I mean, it's just, you can like, you can look at it and go, no, it's not happening, or you can go, it's happening, and just sort of kind of move on with it, and just address it, and then carry on from there. You know, right. it's okay. You know, I think last time you said something about about this too, like where sometimes friends come and go in your life, and that's okay. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So I don't know if there was a friend coming or going. You didn't tell me specifically, but no, that yeah, really. sometimes that happens, and that's fine. Yeah. But we all evolve too, right? Like I'm definitely not who I was 20 years ago. Right. Like any of your jokes about last year, right? But yeah, no, but it's I'm true. actually serious. Yeah. But but but, but I'll, I'll even give it to you. This is uh, this is really how, how I feel about something. So you can go shoot a scene. You take the same scene. You're shooting it Tuesday at four o'clock. Go shoot this scene four o'clock. If we shot this scene Friday at two, it's completely different. And if it's not, we're doing something wrong. Do you understand? It has to be different because it's a different day. The room is different. The air is different. Everything is different. So the guy you interviewed, same guy, but different. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a different person than that. And it was a different day. You know, and other things were going on, so. Yeah, for sure. But it feels like it's funny because when you think about like those sitcoms or whatever, it feels like exactly the same. Like it's not the same thing, it's a different kind of. Correct. Right? Well, because it should look like it should look, it, yeah. but you know, it's like a. That's what. That's the beauty of doing a play, because every night you get to go back and do it again, and and, and it's a different, different performance. Right. And if you're trying to, if you're trying to hold on to the, the the one performance from last Tuesday matinee you did that you liked, then you're dead in the water, because it's a live animal, and it has to be a live animal. Right, and the audience is part of it too, and that changes. A every giant day, right? part. Of, the audience are are our partners, mm -hmm. you know, and the audience. In fact, you hit a certain point in the rehearsal process where you now need the audience. If you don't bring the audience in, you're because you've now gone. You st you started it was like wild enth wild um, enthusiasm, and then completely lost. And then hey, th we're actually doing pretty good. Now it's time for the audience, and the audience is going to tell you a lot, and the audience is going to let you know. They're going to sort of like just eh, nudge you, you know, and. You can't play to the audience because you're because you're doomed. You can only play, be with mm -hmm, your fellow partners mm -hmm. up on the stage. Right. But every night it should be a, it's a different animal every yeah. night. And it and if it's not something is very very wrong. And so, so same with a same with a scene and and and, and a sh it's got to be you know I go to work with actors. I can tell that guy decided three weeks ago how he was going to do the scene, and I know we're at that moment I know we're fucked because I'm like, like who? I'm not I'm not going to tell you. But I can tell you when somebody has decided exactly, like they sat in their house and they were like, I want to do it like, yeah, 
hey, buddy. I mean, I'm like, oh, we're doomed. Like, he's not in the room with me or she. That person is, they've, they've decided their performance that they think is going to be amazing and they've got the whole thing planned. And if you drop a line, it throws them. They don't know what to do because they don't know the scene. Right, they memorize yeah. this sort of bizarre thing. Not everybody can be in the moment like that, I guess, and reactive. Because but that's not how you get the magic, I mean, right? Yeah, but that's the whole thing, though. That's the whole. That's yeah. That's the whole thing. Well, that's, that's the interview secret right too. But that's what, well, that's what I'm talking. We're, we're saying to the each same other. thing. Right. Yes, it's the same exact thing. I have to be here with you, and if I'm not, so sometimes I I'll tell you, like ahead of an interview, I do try to think of, okay, what are some of the areas that I should think about right ahead of time. But I also kind of don't want to do that at all. It's kind of best when you just throw it all away and just walk in and then just see where we happen to be and then go there. And the only problem I have is sometimes I'll do an interview and I'll put a podcast out or something and someone will say, oh, you didn't even touch on bloodline. You know, like, oh, I know, but we were talking about other well, you things. Do, you do the homework of of the questions that you want to ask. And that's what, so yeah, the actor does the homework of, of what he's going to do with, you know, he does the homework on the scene. Then you can't bring the homework with you. You can't act the homework. Just like you, you're not going to act, your, you're not going to do your questions. You did the homework and then you're going to, and then you're going to see what happens in the room. But you you have a, you have a, an, an architecture that you have laid out. So it's not, you're not winging it really. You're prepared and you're open to what happens in the room. Yeah, and I throw it out a lot Correct. of the time. And when the, when, the, when the acting is going well, that ideally has happened. So you see an actor, maybe he's like, that guy's not doing anything. But in order to do nothing, he's, if he's done it well, he's done a lot. He's just not going there and acting his homework. I'm going to do a lot of acting here now. You, mean some, you see a guy, they're acting by the pound. Mm -hmm. I'm like, are they paying this dude by the pound? Because it's a lot, you know? Yeah. It is so interesting. You really do have to be in everything, really. And I think that a lot of times and a lot of people aren't really totally present in a lot. You know, people are thinking about other things or they're thinking about themselves. Like, people are always worried about themselves, right? What yeah. people think of them. What do I look like? What am I saying? Da, 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 da. But really, everybody is not that focused on everybody else. Do you know what I'm saying? I mean, I d yeah, I mean, I think... I think we're all out there trying to do the best we can, mm -hmm. you know, in the world. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, I, I really do, with the exception of those people that are out there, like, doing harm, like, deliberate harm to, to the world. But yeah. I think, you know, most people are out there trying to do the best they can, you mean, yeah. but, uh, you know. So let me ask you this. How have you evolved, because we were talking about kind of changing the person who you were and the person who you are. How have you evolved over your life? Like, who was Yule before versus Yule now? I, don't I like the big question. Where to begin? Um, I really, that's a, wow. I mean, that's a. Is that too big of a question? That's a, that's a. Does anybody else want to answer that? question. I mean, you, I mean, you know, I've been, I think I've been many things. Uh, and I think, you know, I started my artistic journey as a, guy playing with pencils on like boxes so I wanted to play the drums you know, my mother bought me a drum kit you know what I mean so I mean I have evolved I think I, I have evolved I've tried to see what I've always tried to do what, I, what was happening in me you know that's where that's where the paintings come from it's where that stuff comes from you know it's, it's a direct you know uh, it's a direct edit I think I think one of the key things in, in the evolution uh, of, of me as a person for or for good or for, or for or for worse is 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 the trying to remove fear and the and the edit and editing myself and accepting things from maybe people that I I accepted once and I didn't want to accept any any longer so you know the paintings are really the paintings are are there's no director telling me there's no cut action there's no it's me and this and the thing and the canvas and the and the paints, and it's like, and it's a, it either happens or doesn't happen. It's the same with the photos. I walk, the photos come, I walk down the street with a camera in my hand, and I walk very fast. And I work very, very fast. Yeah. Fast, it's, and yeah. then you spot I walk these very fast. angles. I walk and I go boom, boom, boom. Oh, you know. interesting. I wouldn't yeah, have guessed I'm, that. Yeah. And then some, you know, depending, some photos, it's a little more, but depending on the format, but for the most part, I'm shooting very fast with very simple cameras and it's and it's all happening very fast because the minute if I start thinking about it 
it's 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 kind of it's gonna go south. You mean it's just gonna go south? Yeah. So um, for the photography, some of the you saw what I put up there yeah. before. So I mean the emotion and like the humans that you capture are yeah. it's amazing to me so yeah. how could you possibly be running around fast like walking fast and then suddenly you get something so deep that's amazing because you're walking because you're walking and and you're walking you have the camera and eventually you, you when the camera comes up and i use i use very small cameras usually sometimes i have bigger cameras but when the camera comes up there's a moment where the person realizes the, that the, oh, when you the get picture's that about one. to happen, and I'm, that's, I'm oh, trying to get nice. them that will like, you know. And sometimes they look at you, listen, I'm gonna tell you something. It's not for the faint, because, because you, you put yourself in weird positions, because people are like, hey man, you take my picture, man? I'm like, yeah, I goes, why'd you take my picture, man? You know, and I'm like, oh, you know, I'm a photographer, and I'm like, you know, they're like, they're not happy. You so mean? what happens? Well, you know, you sometimes you got to talk your way out of it, or sometimes you're like, or some people, some people they don't care. I mean, you know, but you know, I was shooting at this in this place in Mexico City that I realized afterwards. Somebody said to me, you know, that, that you know, I, I had somebody with me that was sort of watching me, but I, it was like it was like this market, you know what I mean? And some of those photos, the people looking at me like, you know, they're not they're not happy that I'm taking their photo, you know, um, but I don't care because. If I cared, or if any photographer cared, you wouldn't have some of the greatest pictures in the world. And I'm not saying my pictures are great pictures. I'm just they saying, are. if people but cared, yes. but thank okay. you. If all these famous pictures that we have from history, if that guy gave a shit what that person thought, they wouldn't hit the shutter. They wouldn't, the camera wouldn't come up. Because like, so that camera comes up and that guy's like, Yo, anything can happen here, and takes the picture, and then you gotta, and then you just gotta move. That's why I move fast. <laughs> that makes sense. Wear comfortable shoes. <laughs> no, that's why I move fast because I like, and people are like, and I'll, I'll wave, you know, and like, and I just shh, I scurry away like a squirrel. Very interesting. You're right, and I didn't even realize it until you said that. It's the minute that they look that you get, and it's so good. Yeah. Thank you. Then you gotta Sometimes go. they don't know that I'm taking a picture and I take the picture. And then some yeah, pictures are close. How close are you? Like how, what, what I, kind of? Well, I, I get very close because I, I like shooting with a wide angle lens so I get very close. Like this close? Yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah. But how so, did you get the people in the car, that first one? I was, I was in Cuba. Yeah. I was in a van and I opened the door. I saw them. I opened the door of the van and the guy, they were in the car, the family, and the guy looked at me and, and he, when he looked at me, I put the camera up and I took the picture. Sweet. And, and I, you know, but I was in a van. Yeah, you know, he protected. was in a car. Right. And, he, but, and he's, the whole family, they're all looking at me. You know what I mean? They're looking at this dude, you know. Um, what's going on? Why is he taking our picture? I mean, and I'm like, and I wanted to say because I find you ins insanely interesting. You, you know, like, and they are. I mean, that man's face, they just are. And I, I find people interesting. You know, sometimes I will ask the person, may I take your photograph? You mean, and sometimes they'll say no. Sometimes they'll say yes, you know. And... And it's cool, you know, like, the, the, yeah, the guy will stand there, you take his picture, you know what I mean? And it's like, and sometimes those are great, and sometimes those are not great, you know what I mean? Yeah. But they have their own thing, you know? Um, there's a photographer I love, he's a Swede, his name is Anders, Anders Peterson, and he's one of, one of my heroes. He's, he's probably 80 years old now, and he works like that real fast, with a very tiny camera, and he shoots really, really fast. Wow. Uh, just literally, and I've seen, I've seen YouTube videos of him working. I saw him... And he's, you know, the guy's up there. He's on like a basketball field and he's running around with the camera like this, just shooting down onto, I mean, it's just absolutely That's mental. That's cool. Oh, the stuff he gets is, I mean, he's, the, guy's a, the guy's a genius, you know. So people are fascinating, aren't they? I think so. Yeah, I do too. I think people are re really fascinating. So yeah. fascinating. Yeah. I, I like talking to odd, odd folks. You do? Sometimes, yeah. I mean... Yeah, I, I, you know, because I just think there, you know, I think there's a lot going on in there. I do too. You know? Yeah. And when somebody tells me when I say like, oh, I really want to interview so and so, and like somebody will be like, oh, they're really like out there or whatever, and I'll be like, great, I love it, let's do it. I mean, I'm not saying that about you. I love talking to you too, but I wouldn't put you in that category. However, Thank there you. are some very interesting people out there who are like, yeah. yeah, great. Yeah. What kind of more out there you are? Yeah. Hey, we'll have an interesting conversation. I like to hear what you're thinking, you know, no well, matter just, who you are. There's a guy that, that used to hang out. I, I haven't seen him in years, but my, my friend Dan owns the guitar store 
Chelsea Guitars. And there was a guy who'd come in there all the time, and, and um, we used to call him Wave for, and it was, we used to call him Short Wave, but then, then it started just calling him Wave. And he looks like uh, Mink, Mink DeVille, like super rockabilly look, mm -hmm. like with the hair and the whole thing. And he was probably like, in his like 70s, and he would, he talked to you about conspiracy theories, you know, and all that stuff, and then he'd, he'd look at a guitar amplifier that wasn't even plugged in, and he'd put his hand over it, you know, over the tubes, and he'd go, this is a good one. And I'm like, I'm like, what's going on? He's like reading the tube. I'm like, it was, and I'm like, dude, just keep going. Because <laughs> right now, this is everything. I, you're so amazing right now. Uh -huh. And I love people like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think life would be really boring without right, those folks. Right, right. Right, I like the more of that, the better. I yeah, think. we need all. We need everybody to be. Yeah, like that. yeah, yeah. So how about so the people you're attracted to as friends? Because you were saying before that you have like a certain group of friends that you've had for ages. So like, what are you drawn to in a friend? Are they eccentric or not so? I mean, they, they don't have to be. Mm -hmm. They just I don't know something we, something we share in common or our I don't know I. Um, I think you have to be. I, I, I don't know. I think the, I think the main thing I look for in a friend is that when they, when they speak, when they make sounds, when they talk to me, that I don't lose the will to live. And if and if that's you know. That's a good start. If you know, I mean, I mean, you know what I mean. And I then, do because I've been stuck with people yeah. who I feel like it's true, uh, and like I'll exactly. leave an interaction with the person, and I'll be like, I'll feel worse. And I'm like, no. why? Sure. I don't feel good when I'm with this person. And then I have basically, you know, <laughs> pared down my so list. So you, you know what I'm saying? Yes. Right. My husband knows who I'm ta talking uh -oh. about right now. Well. You know, you, and you realize that, like, you know what? I know I'm supposed to be friends with this person, but it's not a positive thing. Yeah. You know. But you're not I supposed like to, to be, be surrounded friends by, with everybody. Yeah, but I like to be surrounded by people who are, you know, I guess real, truthful about who they are, however they are. They don't have to be yeah. a certain way, but I really don't like yeah. the phony person. That's a pet No, I like mine. genuine people. I don't like people that, are like, f pretend they're all, like, sort of holier than thou. Like, those people, I, I, I come at them so hard. What it's do you do? A, I, I'm, I'm their worst nightmare. What do you do? Oh, it's awful. It's awful. I'll just, I just, I'll just, I'll just say like awful things. Like what? I can't say them oh. here. Well, you don't have to say. Oh, no, I'll why? Just, I'll just, I'll just make. You're not them. mentioning the names. No, I just, I just can't. I just, it's people like, oh, you know, like people who are like sort of real, sort of, uh, I don't know, fake, uh, I don't know, pretentious. I just, I just, I have no patience for that. Mm -hmm. I just don't like it. And I, um, here's the thing. I think, I think people. It will know if I if I like you, you you'll know it, and if I don't like you, I'll just go the other way. Yeah. But yeah, some some people talk to you, and you and you're praying for the baby Jesus to take you, and it's and it, and and it has happened. I mean, it's mm -hmm. it's mm -hmm. you know, it's like baby Jesus, take me now. It's running in your head. And you're like, that's great, man. You know, you're like, <laughs> please, Satan, take me. You know what I uh -huh, mean? Or something. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? You just can't. Because it's horrible. It was yeah. horrible. And you, there's nothing you and you and you have to be nice because they're maybe your husband's friend or your or, or a friend of your or friends, and you're like, man, this is not like me and this guy would never be friends ever. Yeah, yeah, totally. If it wasn't for this common person, mm -hmm. you mean like I'm not going fishing with this guy. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm not going fishing at all. But I'm saying <laughs> that I'm not going fishing with that guy yeah, for sure. If I was gonna go fishing, right, right. I'd not be with him. Right. Yeah, yeah you're not into fishing. I did as a kid. I mean, I grew up in Florida. I mean, I do enjoy yeah, the... Yes, so you grew up in Miami, right? You yeah. like a good fishing I grew up in Miami there. Beach, which is very different. I was just there a few weeks ago. That was a great escape from here, I'll tell you what. The it's sun? A, oh, yeah. And the beach? Sure. Well, you don't, have nice. to, you don't have to sell me Miami Beach. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I'm obsessed with the history of, of the place. And, I've, and I have been for a while, much to my wife's chagrin. Uh, Why? Too much? Well, it's, I keep talking about this place, and I'm like, sometimes I, I repeat myself. She goes, no, I know that's where the, uh, you know, like, I'll say it 50 times. I mean, it's terrible, but I'm obsessed with the history, like the origins of it, how it was founded, how it was developed, all the, like, and it's really fascinating how that place sort of came to be. Because hmm. uh, it was quite, it's quite, a, it has quite a journey. Okay, yeah, I'm and afraid to get young... into that because I feel like it's going to go on and on about it. Am I right? No, that's no, you can't. no, that's a whole, that's a I'm different podcast. 
Yeah, okay, we'll save that. The Miami podcast, the Miami yeah. History podcast. In fact, coming soon. Mitch Glazer, the creator of a show I did called Magic City, which was on Stars, yeah. is starting a podcast about Magic City and and Miami. Oh, that's interesting. Yes. So you so can get into that. I might he might, he might ask be on me. it, yeah. He might ask me to come on that. I think um, he will. I know I know more about that stuff than anybody should really. So what do you think about New York? Do you like it? I, I love New York. I, Why? I mean, I consider myself a uh, um a New Yorker, you know, mm -hmm. but I've been in New York for many years. But you know, Miami's where I grew up. You know, I have my childhood. I have just some, I have a lot of connections there that are very, very powerful. Yeah. But I love New York. Yeah, New York's amazing. Mm -hmm. You know, it's New York is where I learned. You know, New York made me. You know, was really the formation of me as a, a creative human. You know, in many ways. Yeah. So you just feel it here. You feel yourself. Oh, yeah, New York. And it's oh, yeah. the, a good uh, nurturing oh, yeah. venue for you. Absolutely. I mean, I think, and I think, you know, actors, young actors should train in New York. And, you know, you know they want to they'll go to L.A. and do whatever. But if you want to really sort of, depends on what kind of career you want to have, you know. Mm -hmm. but if you train in New York and you really sort of understand that and you, and you do theater in New York and you, and, you know, I know it's such a cliche thing to say, but it's actually true. It's yeah. really true. And I think that in New York, you kind of form that uh, community a little bit, right? There's that theater community. A lot of you, like you and Michael, you know him. Uh -huh. It's probably not, for, is it from New York or is it from a project that you worked on? I know, right? him, there a lot I know him from, you know, he had that theater very close yeah, to yeah, our yeah. house, you know, um, and um, that he had for a while. Uh, I don't know if he still has it. Um, no. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, I know you from the... You know, you, you start yeah. doing readings like and you Eric do... Like Eric Bogosian, right? Did you do something Eric with him? Bogosian? Eric well, Bogosian, yeah, and Eric. he knows everybody, and everybody knows, knows everybody. Because and... it really is a tiny, it's a tiny uh -huh. circle of people, you know, at, if you start, when you start looking at it. But yeah, Eric is a, you know, he's a company member. Uh, there, was a, there was a theater company I was very, very close to at one time, and he's a company member there. And uh, and, and um, I know Eric, we've, we've worked together, and he's, and I, you know, he's... A great, he's a great guy. I mean, yeah. but those those things in New York are are like you said are easier to access. You know, you can and you can do you can do readings and and you can do plays and you can do you know which is in L. A. I think it's harder to sustain that and I don't think it happens as mm -hmm. as as often as as it does here. You mm -hmm. know. All right, so. We're getting to the point where we're going to switch to a video and do that part of the show. Do you remember that last time? That's what we did. We usually do about an hour of the video last podcast. Time? Yeah, we did. But remember, I had camera problems. Do you remember this? Griffin Dunn had just left. He did the podcast oh, right yeah. before you, remember? Right. And then he had left, and I remember I was something was happening with the camera. I think it was on the wrong setting. And then we sat down. We did a video. Oh, yeah, we did a video. Okay, we, yeah, we shot video. a video. Okay. So normally I do that, but I'm thinking because I'm looking at the time, and it's about time to do that before you know the show ends. But I didn't ask you my deep, deep questions yet. Let me think of one or two. Uh, life regrets. What are some of your biggest regrets? Ooh. I don't. I can't. I don't think I fully. If I, if, if I was being really, really honest, I don't think I have any because if I, if I change one thing I would I would change I mean there may be things I've I've done or said that maybe I I wish I hadn't but like in the in the overall no because I think if, if you change that you 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 alter you you alter the you alter the person I think you know I mm -hmm. I, I, I firmly believe in that you know um, so I know it's a it's a terrible answer. It's not what you wanted. Should it, no. should, should I make something up? No, I mean, you shouldn't. I don't think. I think it's. I think that's more common an answer than you would think, right? Because I do think that you know some people value everything that went along to contributing to who you are today, and I, I value that too. I mm -hmm. probably have a couple of regrets I could list, but they're really minor and they don't have anything to do with much. I'm not a perfect person, and uh, that's okay. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's like I. It's There's the things, nothing I okay. can do about that. You mean? It's the things... I heard this somewhere sometime that a lot of people will end up regretting the things they didn't do rather the things, than the things that they did do. That, well, does that make sense to you? So it's not um, like... Whatever happened, whatever you did, it made you who you are. But maybe you didn't take an opportunity that you could have taken. Those are my regrets. 
Like, I wish that I moved and I lived in Europe for a couple of years. That's really, like, my yeah. regret that I use as but my in example. The, in the grand scheme of things, that's, that's, that's small. You mean? It it's is. not like you've said, like, you regret cutting that elevator cable <laughs> as, a, as that, that prank that you pulled on those people that one time. I wish I hadn't done that prank. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, because that's well, as I tough. said, it's the things you regret, the things you didn't do, not the well, things you did. You know, I thought I thought at times of putting a tiny atom bomb in my nose uh-huh. and detonating it at a party, and I didn't because I thought that would be terrible, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and that would I would have a deep regret of that. Okay, so that's one of my big questions, and let's go to another one, which is, I asked you this last time, I'm sure, but I don't remember what your answer was. I was a different person. You're going to so go into that, and in fact, wait, I'm going to go in disguise now. I'm going to put this on. All right. Yeah. This is, by the way, Miami area code, 305. Oh, of course, 305. What's on the side? I see a purple. Uh, so Patty, Patty Constantine is a wonderful British actor, is on, is on The Outsider. Mm-hmm. Patty has a band, has a punk rock band called Riding the Low. And that's, that's their pin. Very and cool. I, I wear it there for Patty. Very nice. All right, so who are you? Who is the real Yul Vazquez? Uh, really, the, that not even, I, I, I couldn't, I swear I could not tell you. I, if you look at some of my paintings, I, I write, if you find me, please let me know. I, I literally don't, I don't know. I don't know who I am. Mm-hmm. And that's not even bullshit, you know? And, if, and I think, I think, I think when you find out who you are, I might, I might think it's game over. Because uh, I think, I think we're supposed to keep sort of looking for that. You know I mean, but I can tell you that I prefer being other people than uh, or not, or you know, for doing living in the clothing of someone else than than, than in the uh, clothing of of uh, of Yul Vasquez. Yeah, mm-hmm. sometimes. Yeah, but I don't know who I am. I mean, I, I, yeah, I wish. I mean, do I wish? I don't know. Maybe I don't want to know. Spoiler alert. I mean, you know, I don't know. I mean, you know, it's, it's, I mean, do you want, do you know who you are? I don't know. Nobody's ever asked me, but I've asked everybody else. I think I do know who I am, but I think that I'm ever changing. Well, then. I think I have a sense of who I am, but again, it's but, always But if you're ever changing, the, the game is continuing. Oh, I mean, yeah, the, the game is right, definitely, right, oh, I am nowhere near that, the end. Yeah, yeah, yeah but I'm saying, yeah, the I'm final saying. final whatever. I mean, I just, I try to do the best I can every day. I mean, I, and sometimes I fail absolutely fucking miserably. I mean, you know, and sometimes I don't. Sometimes it's, it's a pretty good day, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I don't know. All I've ever known really is to work as hard as I could, whatever I had to do, you know what I mean? And like, do the best, you know. Yeah. But, you know, my mother always said to me, I don't care what you do, just be really good at it. Which, again, not what you want to say. Yeah, that's a lot of pressure. Because, like, how do you... Maybe I'm not so good at it. You know what I mean? It was like, you know... I'm like, Mom, you know... You know, it's, it's kind of amazing. You know, it's like, how about just do what you want to do and don't be good at it? I don't know. Okay, but again, just to play devil... Parenting devil, vacuum. Parenting vacuum. All of that turned you into who you are. And so similar to right. the concept that you wouldn't want to, you won't, don't regret anything. Correct. All of your mother's things are you. Correct. My mother did, my mother did a pretty damn good job, you know, considering like the hand she was sort of, she was dealt, you mm-hmm. know. But, you know, my, my mother was a very, very powerful there was one law in my house, and it's my mom. So that was a big deal, you know. I mean, I, you know, you can believe me or not, not believe me. I've never done drugs in my life, and that's because I think mainly because I was terrified of what my mother would think, or that my mother would find out, or that I would disappoint my mother. I mean, and disappointing my mother was unfucking bearable. Mm. I mean, that was just unbearable. You know I mean so? Again, so I was in a rock band. Yeah. I had long, I had crazy long hair. I was in a band with drug addicts that were like serious drug addicts, and I never touched anything. And people, they're like, "How did that happen?" I go, "Dude, I'm telling you, I don't know, but I think fear of my mother is probably like 99.9 percent of why." That's you your know. super. Aren't you guys glad you came tonight? 
<laughs> so pop quiz, what part of his personality or his persona was responsible for him not taking drugs ever? So remember, our options is multiple choice. So we have the id, the ego, and the superego. So what part of you kept you off drugs even when it was you were surrounded by them? You, you need to tell me because I, I... It's one of those three things. We talked about it earlier. Anyone? Anyone? Bueller? Yes! So, oh, super Yay. ego. Okay, oh, super ego. Yes. Okay. So the super ego, that's, is that old brain, new brain thing? No. No, no, no. Super ego is the, like, the, the, the goody two-shoes. Like the perfect, makes all the right decisions, is always following the rules. That's just kind of one part of your conscious. It's, it's, now we're getting yeah. into technical terms. but So there's the superego, and then there's the id, which wants to do everything, just desires, and just doesn't okay, care about yeah. the rules, and wants to do anything it wants. So these are all components of like your personality, yeah, sure. i yeah. And so the superego and the uh, id are in conflict with each other. And then the ego sort of balances it out. Wow. Mm. So the ego is the mediator. I guess. Mm. The ego is right. It's a little complicated, more complicated than that. But the super ego is the you're not taking drugs. Mom yeah. always said never take drugs. No, listen, that was a, I like you know. What's crazy because you know I had another family member that went went the opposite direction. So you know and, and you know right. And, Right, but again, right, everyone is so different, even in the yeah. same environment, but it's not exactly the same but environment. the guy in the band, the guy with the long hair, the guy surrounded by drug addicts, that guy yeah. did not. And it's kind of, you know, it's, it's a fascinating thing. It is. You know, it's, you know, and the other person who was not involved in that did. Right. You know, it's kind of wild. So yeah. that, right, that have, then that wouldn't be the environment. You would say... So you could That's say, does topic. the environment, right. you know, Nature, I mean, this, person, this person is immersed in, in this madness and like crazy drinking and is not participating, is so concentrated on playing the guitar well. Yeah. You know, like literally like I would play all night. I was playing in a cover band and I was playing, we're, I was playing cover music, I was playing four sets a night because that's what you do in, in, in Florida, in Miami, you know, just, you play four or five sets a night, you know, not here you play one set, four or five sets a night. That's how you get really good. Because you're playing in front of people six nights a week, four sets a night. So I would play till four o'clock in the morning, then I would get up, I would sleep, I'd get up at one, and I would practice and practice and practice and practice, and then go back and do it again. So that's all I was, that's all I wanted to do, was do that thing really well. I was not like, hey yeah. man, let's drink some whatever, I don't know. You know, I didn't, you know. Right. Well, no. that's just who you were and what yeah. you're... Per now you're I like the tequila once in a while, but, you know... Yeah, but, you know, yeah, yeah. But not going to lie, different. but I'm a grown-ass man, Kara. You know that's what I mean? right. So, you know, you and know. And, I'm like, and what? Nothing. Go on. No, you're a grown-ass man. No, I'm a grown-ass man, and, and, you know, I have evolved into something else. That's right. So you just explained monster, how you monster. evolved. Uh, Look, you just explained how you evolved. Did I? Yes. Well, I, 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 a sliver. A sliver. Yeah, yeah, a sliver, yeah. We'll keep talking about that. I think that evolution is deeper than that. It's, it's, I think it's it's a multi-layered I think so too. Uh, event, but you know. I think so too. I'm, I'm, I think we've already evolved from the beginning of this night to the end. I'm a, I'm a different person than when I when I got here. As today. am I, are you guys? Yeah. <laughs> Definitely. All right, let's do the video. You ready? Man, I'm, listen, I'm following you. You tell me whatever you need me to do, that's what I'm here to do. Let's do the video. That's what All we're right. doing. Let's do it. All right, so this is what we normally do in the podcast is we have the talk and then we do the video. Are the cameras kind of ready or no? Not quite? No? That one's good. Is this one good? We're having problems over there? All right, you know what we're going to do then? This camera is set, so we're gonna we're gonna switch seats because I'm more concerned. Oh yeah, let's do that. Let's do it. We'll do this. Get that. All right, Ryan. This is a little challenge for you, which is part of the typical podcast situation anyway. You never know what you're gonna walk into, and there's all kind of kinds of technical things. So you're gonna make it a two shot, but you're gonna really focus on Yule because he's the one. Um, so I don't need to be on this, honestly. Because the vid it's more important that I capture you. You need to be on it. I'm going to tell you. It's in your trailer. When you're on it, it's better than just a single. Oh, really? Yeah, because you need you need the other component in the scene. 
not just this, not just the talk, the voice. I'm telling you honestly. No, I believe you. I appreciate yeah. that feedback because I don't yeah. know because I'm look. You know, the things are all going on the YouTube channel, and I want to know what do people want to see? Do they want to see a close up like they're just hanging out talking to you? themselves, you know what I'm saying? So if it's just you, then they no, feel this, like they're this, with you. This is your jam. You need to be in, in the you need to be in the shot. All I mean, right. so, yeah. Twofer? Really? Twofer, man. Yeah. You all agree? Yeah, you gotta oh, do a two shot, to honestly. Yeah. You need reaction. Oh, okay. Yeah, you need you need that, honestly. So okay. so, yeah. Because for yeah. a long time I never was in the video. And then I realized when I was making a reel that I had to get in the no, video. You need to do the video, man. You need the video. All Listen, right. You kids with your TikToks and your emojis <laughs> and your whatnots, uh -huh. I don't know what's going on here. <laughs> okay, so we're ready. So I'm going to start. I have some questions actually written down. This is more of my formal. Wow, look at this. But look, I'm going to show you. want to see my process? I'm not going to show you everything, but these, I did have, here's my structure. Like you were talking about the foundation. This is some of the things I thought about beforehand. So I have some notes here, some topics. I didn't look at them uh, once, as you can okay, see. Because the, the hard drive is still working. Yeah, it's always working. Yeah. Always working. So far, but so for good. this, I'm going to ask different questions, not, not the usual. They're, they're separate, so I'm going to look at my little notes. Okay. All right, so we're rolling, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Who are some celebrity, or what are some celebrity sightings you've had? Not at work, obviously. You see people on set. But who have you seen, like, at the drugstore or something? Easy, this, is a easy, this is an easy, easy answer. The greatest one ever, 27th and 7th Avenue, Harrison Ford. Oh, that's huge. Huge. You, when do you see Harrison Ford? Fucking never. Never? Okay. Plus, he lives this in like Wyoming or something. Helicopter. Suddenly, I'm like, that's fucking Harrison Ford. And literally, I was just... I just kept going. I was just like, I'm not going to say, I'm just going to keep going. It, it was Harrison Ford. Where Believe was he? Me. In a helicopter? <laughs> did I miss something? Okay, that's amazing. That's amazing. So now um, this is priceless, right? Yeah, Whenever I just did. did. I'll tell you exactly who's what, standing. What did you say about he's helicopter? Because sometimes, because he's always in a, he flies his own oh, helicopter. Oh, all right, all right. So you, that's what you don't see him because he's in a helicopter. Okay, I'll go slower. Okay. I'm going to go slower. <laughs> Talk to me like I'm four. <laughs> he was on the southeast corner of 27th and 7th. There used to be a, a, a restaurant there called Manhattan Heroes. And he was literally standing on the corner. He had his jacket in his hand. And I walked by. I was like, Harrison Ford. It was kind of amazing. That is cool. But you walked away. You didn't No, 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 no. I just, I can't. I can, very, in New York, that's what we do. Yeah. But very few times have I ever, uh, there's been a, Maybe sometimes I've said something to somebody. I said, I just want to say, a man, you know, I, I, I will tell you if I think you're, you're amazing, you know. Uh, I mean, I, I went out to people at, at, at this Emmy party and I, that I didn't really know, but I knew them. like, hey, man, I think you're incredible. Right, sure. Um, Eric Lang. Eric Lang, who's on uh, Escape, Escape at Denimora. He's absolutely incredible in it. And, uh, okay, I love that series. Yeah, he's, he's so incredible. good. Yeah. Um, and uh, and uh, I... I um, he was at the Emmy party, you know, and I went up to him and I said, I think you're just absolutely incredible, man. You mean? And uh, he, you know, people, I don't, I don't think people do that enough, you know? Henry Winkler writes fan letters to people who he, Does he? thinks That's awesome. is great. And a lot of them, of course, get back to him, uh, not surprisingly. That's but he does, he makes a point of doing that when he sees somebody on something and he thinks they're great. The, um, the singer for, for Tool is a guy called Maynard James Keenan, is a guy I've... I've uh, been very fortunate to meet and we've become really good good friends. He does this amazing thing. He, he also makes these wines and stuff. So he, he'll he find uh, somebody he admires as like agent and he sends a package with a letter and some wines. And he says, it literally writes, the letter's like basically, I don't think this is done enough. And one day, yes. you know, he goes, and he literally says, I wish I'd done it to, like, people like Bowie and stuff like that, and I didn't. And I just want to say, thank you, and I'm, I'm a huge ad admirer, and sends him, I mean, it's amazing. Really. I love that, yeah, and I beautiful. agree with him. I don't think people say it enough. They <clears throat> think yeah. it, they admire people, or they appreciate something that someone else did, yeah. but they don't say it, so yeah. the other person doesn't ever know. No, that's true. I so, also think people don't tell people sometimes when they're crap. Uh, yeah, no, probably. I'm was, unless I was it's online. I'm kidding about it. Unless Not it's true. social media, in which case they do. Well, well, social quite media, a lot. yeah, that's true. Yeah, the opposite. Well, behind the anonymity of your, uh, right. your iPhone, but yeah, but I think it's good to go up there because I saw you in that show and I thought it was shit. 
And I think it's important because they can learn from that. <laughs> awful. I would never do that. Okay, no. let's go back to our weird questions. So if you could pick two celebrities to be your parents, who would you choose? Tilda Swinton. <laughs> and Montgomery Clift. Cool. He was always the one you had in mind, right? He Growing was, up? Yeah, he's yeah, my, he's my he's hero. Yeah, he's my hero. All right. Guilty and, pleasure. And Peter Sellers. Peter Sellers. Yeah. Guilty pleasure. Survivor. Okay. We do watch Survivor, though. That's, uh, Every single Peter. season? Oh, fuck yeah, man. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh no. We're not, we're not fucking around with Survivor, <laughs> dude. Uh, yeah. Guilty pleasure. I, I can't say I have any because I, I, I don't pretty much deny myself anything. Okay. You know what I mean, I, I yeah. just, I mean, I, I don't, this is, this is more like, more of a therapy session than, than uh, it's a, for a different time, but yeah. Yeah, so I. I uh, but look, if it's a guilty pleasure, then you're not denying yourself. You're doing it, but you feel a little guilty about it. I think because the connotations of watching a reality show, that's why I call it a guilty yeah, pleasure. Yeah, but, yeah, know, sure. I listen, honestly, we've also watched Housewives. You do. Everybody does. I everybody don't, but else. everybody I talk to does. Um, so you're not I'm alone. Just, I'm not. I mean, it's and it's honestly the best. Uh, no, it's fucking horrible. Oh. It's absolutely horrible. No, no, it's no, it's pure shit. Oh. But you can't stop watching it. It's just an incredible train wreck. And they're all they're all such awful humans. And you're like. Yeah, fuck her, man. I'm like, wait a minute, what's wrong with me? Why am I watching this? You know what I mean? Seriously, like, it makes you think what did what went wrong in your life, you know? Uh -huh. And then, then, you know, but, you know, I, you know what? I have one, I, I, I have one regret I just thought of. Okay. I'm sorry I, I ever watched one episode of The Fucking Apprentice. Of The Apprentice. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, that's a good yeah. one. I mean that. I accept mm -hmm. that. Yeah. All right, what are you obsessed with? Uh, I'm obsessed with a lot of stuff. I mean, I, I'm obsessed with making stuff. It's like a, it's almost a, compu a compulsion. You know, yeah, it's almost, yeah, but it, it's more of a uh, sort of like, uh, a fuel, I think. It's a. I think, you know, uh, life is short, mm -hmm. you know, and I think, I think it's important to do something creative at least once a day for ten minutes or something, mm -hmm. you know. I, I, uh, but that's really that's a bad. That's not a good obsession. Right. I, I mean, you have like a silly obsession toast. or something. I'm obsessed with toast. toast. <laughs> um, I'm just, Very serious. I'm kind of obsessed with coffee. I mean, I drink. I mean, in, 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 can you tell? Right, can you tell? Do you you should try. I think he should try decaf. That guy. That's that's what's going on right now. In the, uh, How many no, cups I love today? Oh, I could, I could drink ten cups of coffee a day. You can. Oh, I mean, I'm Cuban. First of all, right. You know. So are we talking about like little espresso? No, no, no. I like the drip. Uh, oh, right, coffee. Yeah, big yeah, 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 yeah. Right? Absolutely, yeah. Your coffee maker. Uh, but as a kid, they, we they gave us. Cuban coffee and then sent me to school. And it didn't dawn on me till later what they were actually sending to school was a rocket. Because it's a child, so Cuban coffee, not only yeah. has caffeine, it has an extraordinary amount of sugar. So That's you right, they jack it up with sugar first. It's, 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 un it's delicious, it's yes. like dessert. So they're, they're jacking this kid up on, on basically speed, mm -hmm. and this is go to school now. I mean, <laughs> So Good luck to the teachers. Oh man, I mean, I used to get like, um, uh, like, talks a lot in class, you know, reports, and you know, mm -hmm. like withdrawals yeah. in class. Withdrawals. As coffee, caffeine withdrawals. Yeah. In, right. In class. Sobbing in the corner, screaming for <laughs> right. caffeine coffee. Yeah. Right. By the way, yeah, there's a be. great little place that we went to in Miami, right near the airport, and you can get a, like, a Cafe Cubano right near there. Near the airport. Not near the airport in, in the Miami. Airport. No, no, no. In Miami, maybe, like, two blocks away. It's on the corner. I forget what street it is. South why are you, why are you even two blocks away from the airport? Oh, I mean, you're nothing. leaving. You're going to wherever you're going. Just, go, just get the coffee in the airport. In the airport, huh? Go to, yeah. 
Like where? La carreta oh, in the right. airport. I will next. And I'm going to tell you something right now. You think I'm you think I'm kidding? It's one of the best Cuban meals you ever have. And if you go on Tuesday, they have the pot roast. <laughs> and I'm not even kidding. Only on Tuesday you get the pot roast, and the pilots and everybody in line, and they get and they're, they're and they're ordering the pot roast. I just turned into Henny Youngman, didn't I? <laughs> And get the pot roast. It's delicious. It's terrific on Tuesdays. The pot roast. It's There's seriously. nothing wrong with honey. I'm not even in, in Spanish. It's called boliche. Uh huh. You know, and then they also have you know, carne asada, which is like a beef stew, but it's only on Tuesdays. Got it. Anyways. All right. So doing that. Last question. These guys are so happy. They are thrilled. Look at this right here. Thrilled <laughs> that they showed up tonight. Such good tips we've gotten tonight from you Listen, all. Listen, you can't. If you follow everything I've told you to do tonight, you'll you have a great life. I don't even know. Last question. What's your weirdest habit? Uh, boy. A stumper. Weird habit. Uh, I mean, probably, I probably have a lot. Um, I don't. I, I don't really. I don't know. Actually, a weird habit. Should we ask somebody else? <laughs> Yeah. Really? I, Linda, by the way, can we do a little shout out to Linda, Yula's wife? Yeah. Linda, also known as Jasmine, Princess Jasmine. Are you probably ti- are you tired of hearing that? Never. Okay. It's, it's, I'm married to a Disney princess. Yes, you are. It's absolutely insane. You are. Who says that you have no weird habits? So that's quite nice. Yo, that's uh, that's pretty good. Yeah, yeah. it's um, pretty good. All right, ha- so no weird habits except for all the ones that we talked about tonight. How about that? Well, yeah. Well, that's well, we talk about a lot of weird shit tonight. I mean, I mean, it's a it's a, I mean, I'm a, I'm a complete clusterfuck, really. You know? You'll have to listen to the whole podcast to hear everything. Are you going to edit this? Are you gonna, no, no. Are you going to edit me out of this podcast? <laughs> it's just going to be you asking questions in dead air. It's so good. <laughs> Riveting. No, the better thing is I'll take my voice out and we'll just have you. Like, you're no. doing a rant all night. Not a rant, you but I... Be in the, you, you don't understand. You're a giant part of the show. Okay. People are showing up for you, man. I'm telling you. They like you. I appreciate that. It's true. I don't always know if they do. I have to be honest. Like I know you're. T- I believe I'm you. Telling you they do. I believe you, but I do wonder because I know, you know, it's your job as an actor to come and be who you think you should be, right? I just, t- I just told you I have no idea who that, he, who that even is. Right. I mean, I. Well, you know who you're supposed to be based on a character you're supposed to be. I playing. didn't think I, I had to do anything tonight here for you other than, just. Trying to answer that this exactly stuff as it. truthfully as I can. I mean, you know, it didn't, it didn't always go great. I mean, I don't know if you got the answers, but, you know, it is what it is. Yeah, no, I yeah. appreciate that. And that's how I wanted you to come in. And I don't ever want anyone to come into a conversation with me prepared. That would be the worst. It would be tough to prepare for this. Well, yeah, some people try to prepare and they don't realize it's not that kind yeah, of show. That's called a press junket. Yes, that's called a press junket. They're that's the a whole. Worst. That's oh, a whole yes. different ball. Yes. Right. And the print is just sitting there and they're watching. They're going, "Look, it's time for you to go now." Exactly. And it's just, no, that's another. That's a, but that's a, you're promoting something. I'm up. I'm here hanging out with right. you. You know. I, I, you know. But some publicists want a book because they want their client to promote yeah, something, I think which I, is fine. But we do it in the course of the conversation, as opposed yeah. to but like we talked about the outsider, not that much. But no, but you, we, we we barely talked about it. It doesn't even yeah, matter yeah. though. But I think you and I first met because my publicist arranged yes, it, it for was. Russian Doll. Yeah, True. but but then I left. And I was going like, this is a great hang, and then people really enjoyed listening to that thing, and I think got something from it, and uh, that's a big deal. Who gets anything from from an interview, really? You know what I mean? Yeah, you know, yeah. It's like, uh, you know, and quite honestly, the, the, it, it's not always great to reveal so many things about yourself. You know what I mean? It's just because if you're trying to create an illusion, you know, you, you don't want to know a lot about that person. Right. You know? but, but we live in, in the world now where that's, that's over, really. I mean, that's kind of yeah. over, you know? And yeah. It's, it's an interesting, you know. It's like over. the old school movie star that was like mystery. Correct. You knew nothing about. Well, you can control. Mm-hmm. You can control the output. Yeah. You can control where it went. You know that yeah. that ship has sailed. By the way, that reminded me about what you were saying about your publicist. Right. That's how we hooked it up last. That's when yeah. she came to me. Right. So anyway, the thing I love about interviewing you too, or interviewing, it's not really an interview, is that I don't have to go and research the things you've been in. I've already seen them all naturally. There you go. Which is such a bonus because with some people I have to go watch shows that I would never have tuned into. 
But like I've already watched, uh, I didn't have to watch anything for you. I'd seen everything on my own. Well, which speaks volumes to what you choose to do. I'm gonna say. Well, you know, I uh, I've been look this this thing you 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 prepare you you train you, you work hard and then there's an element of good fortune involved and anybody that tells you that that's not true is full of shit and not luck because luck intends to discount hard work but good fortune so i've seen great actors you know yes in fact linda was doing a play in in in, in houston with with a, an incredible cast of amazing actors and I realized nobody will ever know who these people are. Mm. They, and that's part of the thing. I've been really fortunate. Really good people have wanted to work with me. I, I show up, I don't make trouble. I do my work. You could, you could call up any director I've worked with. They wouldn't, you know. And that's like, that's half the jam right yeah. there. I mean, yeah. you know, I've and I, I'm prepared part. and I, I do my, you know, and I, and I, and, and that's, so, I've been really fortunate to have been in those things, you know? Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I can't, you know, it's hard to take credit for that. You yeah, know yeah, I, mean? I hear you, know. you. But you did something when you got there to each of those jobs, so. And I feel fortunate to have had you on the show twice. Thank you, thank you. And to have met you at all. You it know was what, a I'm fortunate to have met you. Yes, so will I be on that list of friends who you have not shut out of your life? That's the question. Of course. You were you you already on the list of friends. You were, you were, we became friends right after that. In fact, didn't I send a shout out? Who sent a, sh who said, you said, you texted somebody, somebody else was coming on the show. You're like, oh yeah, tell them I say, hey, there's somebody coming on the show that's a friend of mine. You, uh, first of all, everybody you interview is, I, is like somebody I know. Oh, um, really? I know a lot. Of, oh, sure. It's a, it's yeah, a yeah, tiny yeah, community, yeah. you know? Like, well, I don't know, what, what do you mean by the shout out by the something? There was somebody was coming on and you texted him and I said, oh, say, say hi to him. Oh, that was Griffin Dunn. Oh, it was Griffin, okay. I think. Yeah, Griffin. But also maybe when I was having the show with Michael and I think I invited you to come and see the show. Yes, you did, you And did. then you did say to me, now that I remember, you said, oh, I love Michael. Tell him I said He's hi, amazing. right? Did you did say Did you do that? that show here? No, we okay. did that at uh, a place in, uh, like on the west side. So that was a okay. whole big production. We did the whole thing. You know what's fun? If you ever get the chance, Good drinking with Griffin. Oh yeah. Oh, that's right. You had those watering holes that you go to, right? Together. Yeah. I mean, that, I, I see him. I see him at this one place once in a while. But which now is that place? We we don't we don't go there anymore. That place is, that place is. Uh, we we broke up at that place. Oh, why? What happened? It had some management uh. changes, and uh, and now we go to another. We, you know, but I haven't seen Griffin in a long time. But I I um. I text with him every once in a while. I'll get a text, and uh, if you haven't seen the documentary he made about his aunt, so yeah, good. Wait, hold on. That one is really, really no, good. No, it's incredible. There are yeah, two, it's incredible. There are two that I said at the beginning of his show. There's that. So he, Griffin Dunn. Does everybody know Griffin Dunn? He's an actor. So he yeah. made a documentary about his aunt Joan Didion, which right. is like a cool factoid. Unbelievable. Very cool, and it was a great, uh, great documentary. Mm -hmm. And then there was also one about Griffin's family that he was in. Oh, that I so about seen. Dominic Dunn, Griffin Dunn's father, yeah. who was the journalist and author. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Fascinating, you should watch that. It's on Amazon, or it was on yeah. Amazon when he was on the show. I, I would like, I'd, it's called I'd like, like to After see that. the Party, I think, Dominic Dunn, so good. Yeah, watch I it. I bet it is. All right, I think we're good. Hey man. Thank you for this. If, if you're good, I'm good. I'm good. And we're done. And now one last thing. <laughs> That was Yul Vazquez. My original talk with Yul aired about one year ago in March. So if you want to listen to that, go for it. Just scroll back on your favorite podcast app or go to reallyfamouspodcast.com. Oh, and check out the video. Catch it on my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash reallyfamous. I'm Kara Mayer Robinson. Thanks for joining me and Yul for a little while. I hope you're good. All right. Thank you. Thank you. You guys were a good crowd. Thank you for being a whole big crowd. Spirited, spirited crowd. Yeah, spirited, spirited crowd. Well, you're not done yet, though. So one last thing that we do is, we, do you remember what we do, Ryan? We always ask for the testimonial kind of thing. So you're going to look at the camera, 
And not me, I'm out of this one. I don't care what you say. And you're just gonna look at the camera and you're gonna say, hi, I'm Yul Vazquez. This is Bono. This song was written in a hotel room in New York City. I don't want to die, a friend of ours. Hor horrible Bono impersonation. More of that. Terrible. I don't, I don't agree. I think that was good. Um, hi, I'm Yul Vazquez and I just talked to Kara and then anything you like. Hi, I'm Yul Vasquez. I just got raked over the calls by Kara on a really famous podcast. My life will never be the same. Baby Jesus, take me now. How's that? Is that pretty good? Can you, can you use that? <laughs> Hashtag un unusable. <laughs> Hashtag brilliant. Hashtag un unusable. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. No, that's it. No, that, You're done. No, that's you, it. You're going to use that's that? That's what I'm going to use. So good. I, I dare I you to fucking use that. Well, are you kidding? That's, that's so going off this weekend. Oh, and you're getting tagged in it, so don't oh, worry God, about that's it. That's so good. That's so good. Thank you. Oh, my God.